Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that is your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I am answering the age old question. Do you really need an eye cream? I have definitely come across eye creams that really do have the exact same ingredients as a moisturizer, like a full face moisturizer. And yet they're two, three times the cost. And it's like, how is this targeting my under eye concerns? Like, can I just use my full face moisturizer under my eyes and get the same result. This doesn't describe all eye creams. This just describes bad eye creams. And you definitely should not be wasting your money on a bad eye cream because it is kind of a waste of money. It is just an under eye moisturizer and you can be getting a lot more bang for your buck and you can definitely be targeting a lot of your under eye concerns with a good eye cream. <music> So do you need an eye cream? I would say yes, you do need an eye cream if you are looking to address under eye concerns like fine lines and wrinkles, darkness underneath the eyes or redness, puffiness or like a loss of elasticity. It just seems like that that under eye areas may be a little bit saggy or a little bit thin. In those cases, if those are your concerns, I do think that picking a good, underlying good, eye cream can actually help you. And when it comes down to it, you have to look for active ingredients in your eye creams. Now, you know that retinol is the gold standard when it comes to well aging. This is an ingredient that can stimulate collagen production that fights fine lines and wrinkles and the loss of elasticity. And it can also have like a brightening effect on your skin. We know retinol to be a really great ingredient and it can actually be very beneficial for the under eye area too. Now, this is an ingredient that if you want to use this for your under eye concerns, you must find an eye product because you know, just regular strength retinol that you might be using on your face is most likely going to be way too harsh for your under eye area. That area does tend to be a little bit more sensitive. The skin is thinner there. And with retinol, there are some harsh uh, side effects like irritation and um, flaky skin, really, really dry skin. So you don't want to put your face retinol <laughs> underneath your eyes. You do want to look for a good eye cream because they have been formulated to be gentler for that specific under eye eye area. So one that I really like is from First Aid Beauty. It is their retinal eye cream. And what I like about this is it pairs retinal alongside of magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. Now this is actually a derivative of vitamin C. It's a stabilized form. So you're getting a lot of the benefits of vitamin C like brightening and collagen stimulation, skin firming. Actually, vitamin C is a very good ingredient to look for in eye creams. So this is a really interesting eye cream with a lot of active ingredients in it that are meant to target fine lines, wrinkles, darkness underneath the eyes, and loss of elasticity. Something else I like about this eye cream from First Aid Beauty is it really has been formulated to help your skin accept the retinol a lot better. We do have barrier supportive ingredients in here like ceramides that can really help your skin adapt, but they're also using encapsulated retinol. Now this has a couple of different benefits and this is something that you wanna look for in retinol products because encapsulating the retinol means that it's going to stay potent for longer and more effective for your skin, but it can be released over a slower period of time meaning it is less irritating and harsh on the skin because it the um, the release is happening in a slower period over a longer period of time and that allows your skin to adapt to it a lot easier. So First Aid Beauty has really thought about not only is retinol an amazing ingredient for the under eye area, but they've thought about the best way to help your under eye area, that delicate skin, adapt. Now there is another encapsulated retinol retinoid product that I recently discovered that I really like and it's from the K-Beauty world. This is the Beauty of Joseon Revive Eye Serum Ginseng Plus Retinol and I'm really trying to emphasize that this is spelled with an A instead of retinol spelled N-O-L. So these are not two different ways to spell the same ingredient. They are different. They're both forms of retinoic acid. Here's the difference 
difference. Retinol, which we just talked about in the First Aid Beauty Eye Cream, has two steps to convert on your skin to retinoic acid, and that's where we get all of the good benefits. Now, retinol, spelled with an A, takes one step to convert into retinoic acid, meaning that it's gonna be a little bit more potent, maybe a little bit stronger, maybe even potentially a little bit more irritating on the skin, possibly. Now, I think Beauty of Chosan has really thought this through. They're using the very effective potent ingredient, but they're using it again in an encapsulated technology. They're using 0.02% of retinol. I know that that sounds like a small amount, but they are releasing it over time. So encapsulating, again, keeps things super effective, but it keeps things a little bit more gentle on the skin. And you don't want to be chasing super high percentages of an ingredient like this for that delicate under eye area. Now the texture of this, it's got a little bit more richness. It's not greasy, but just a little bit more rich richness than the First Aid Beauty, but it kind of comes in this like gel cream type of texture and it really kind of like plumps and hydrates the under eye area with like a nice amount of moisture. And again, a really good absorbency um, with this cream. You're not gonna get like that greasy under eye feel or like panda eye in the middle of the day because of this product. I think that it's got a really nice texture that should work for a variety of skin types. I've noticed that the combination of the retinol with the ginseng really does seem to up the benefits for or, um, under eye darkness. So if you have a little bit of dark under eye circles or maybe even a little bit of like redness, which is what I get under my eyes, I do find that ginseng kind of helps to revive that and refresh that just a little bit, make it look a little bit more lively. Um, and then of course, retinol is a brightening ingredient too. So it's kind of a nice combination for dark or red under eyes, maybe even a little bit more effective than the First Aid Beauty. Maybe, that's just my personal experience. But I actually happen to like both of these products and I think that they're really good introductions to uh, retinol in eye creams. I think that they give really good benefits. Now here is a side tip for you. Uh, under eye products actually tend to work really nicely on the neck area. So if you've ever thought about using retinol to target maybe some fine lines or some tech neck, right? Um, but you found it to be a little bit harsh, a little bit drying, maybe start getting peeling skin on your neck, that's no good. You try an under eye product that has retinol in it or any really active ingredient because the neck area does tend to react a little bit differently than the face area. And eye creams that are targeted for delicate under eye uh, skin do tend to work on the neck as well. Now, another ingredient that I really seek for in my eye products are peptides. I love a good peptide eye cream. I've been using them for many, many years and I think with really good results. But the thing about peptides is they're actually just like a really big class of ingredients. So just the word peptide alone on the ingredients list isn't necessarily going to guarantee you under eye benefits because they all do different types of things. So you really do need to be looking for the right peptides in your under eye products. And that's why I want to talk about the Claire's Fundamental Eye Awakening Gel because this product I've been a fan of for many years. You've seen it all over my channel. Um, but this product actually is a great example of a couple of different peptides in the formula that can give you really good benefits. And the first First one is copper tripeptide one. This is my all time top favorite peptide. And the reason it's my all time favorite is because it does so much for the skin. And if you were looking to get into peptide products, this is the peptide that you want to look at, just my personal opinion. But this is a peptide that can actually stimulate collagen production on the skin. And again, that's what fights the fine lines and wrinkles. Look, like I'm not a spring chicken. I have fine lines underneath my eyes and I actually use a lot of copper uh, tripeptide one uh, under eye products to help address that. And I have seen really meaningful benefits and results with it. So I believe in this, in this peptide. And the nice thing is, Unlike retinol, which does have probably a better benefit for stimulating collagen, it doesn't have the drawbacks of irritation and sensitivity. You don't have to really think too hard about using um, peptide products. So I like that it's a little bit of a gentler alternative to retinol. You don't have to get your skin used to it. It just you put it on and you forget about it and it goes to work for you. So the Claire's uh, Fundamental Eye Gel does have this ingredient, plus another one that I like to see in eye creams, which is acetyl hexapeptide 8. Now, 
this is not like the main ingredient that you want to focus on in your under eye products but if you see it in the under eye product it is a really good supportive ingredient because this is actually known as the botox peptide because it gives such immediate results to firming and lifting the skin so if you've ever used an eye cream that has given you like immediate results you're like wow my under eye area looks like lifted and firm this was probably the ingredient that was responsible for that. It gives really fast, really good results. The reason that I say it is a supportive ingredient is just because those results are not long lasting. Just like Botox, once you stop using Botox, eventually it wears off and you don't you don't have that lifted and firm effect anymore. It's the same with acetylhexapeptide A. Once you stop using the ingredient, the effects go away. Now I love to use the Claire's Eye Gel as a great example ingredients list to look at, especially when it comes to learning about peptides because the two that I just talked about are definitely the ones that you wanna look for, maybe in even other eye products besides the Claire's one. But I do wanna point out that there are actually, you probably noticed this, four peptides in the ingredients list. And the other two peptides are nothing to write home about. They don't really do too much. There's not a lot of demonstrable benefits behind them for the under eye area. They're nice to have in the formula. They're gonna help with hydration and things like that. But just generally speaking, they're lesser known with lesser known benefits. And so even though you're seeing the word peptide, remember they don't all do the same thing. They're not all created equal. This texture is very different than the other products that we're talking about because it is not a cream texture. It is a plumping hydrate light gel texture. So if you've ever kind of stayed away from eye creams because you just don't like the feeling of heavier creams underneath your eyes, consider something like this. Consider this gel texture because it's hydrating, it's cooling, it's refreshing, it's light, and it's quickly absorbed into the skin. It doesn't feel heavy. Something I like about a really hydrating, plumping gel texture like this underneath the eyes, especially if you're trying to address fine lines and wrinkles, is when you really hydrate the skin, you plump it out. When you plump it out, the fine lines and wrinkles don't appear as deep as they did without that type of skincare product, right? So this is actually a great way for you to target that in an under eye product. Um, it's just kind of like really plump out and smooth out the fine lines and wrinkles. I also wanna talk about the Inkey List Caffeine Eye Cream. And this is actually a budget pick. So if you've ever thought that all eye creams were super duper expensive, this one is not. This is definitely a lot easier on the wallet. And I wanted to talk about this one because it also contains peptides. I mean, you may have heard of caffeine to be really great for depuffing the under eye area, and it actually is a really nice ingredient to find in an eye cream. I just don't think it's that amazing to stand alone, like on its own, but to have it in this eye cream, I think it's good. Do you know what I'm saying? I just don't, I don't consider it like the star ingredient, but that's just my personal opinion. What I think is like really doing the heavy lifting in this eye cream is the Matrixel 3000. That's actually a peptide peptide duo. So peptides have entered the chat again. And um, these two peptides, when you find these in um, any type of skincare product, you can expect for some collagen stimulation, some work on the elasticity and firmness of the skin. It's uh, right next to copper tripeptide one. It's probably one of the better studied peptides out there. This has a really nice texture too. It's kind of a gel cream type of texture. We've got that hydration plumping smoothing effect just from the texture alone. Plus the ingredients are kind of helping to work on that long term. And it's a really good affordable price, like around $10. So um, I think that this is a really nice eye cream with a good, you know, a good proven peptide complex in here. Um, and it could be a great starter eye cream too. I wanna shout out one more product, but make sure to stay tuned because I'm gonna talk about some eye cream alternatives. If you just don't like eye cream products or even eye gel products, I still have some ways for you to get these ingredients into your under eye routine without the, the thickness and the, the weight on your skin. And a couple of other tips for taking care of your under eyes. Okay, so the last eye cream that I wanna shout out because it actually um, has almost all the ingredients that we talked about except for retinol. Um, it's a really nice mix of everything. And it is the Pyongyang Yul Black Tea Time Reverse Eye Cream. This is a great one from K-Beauty that can be easy on the wallet, but it does have um, quite a few of the ingredients that we talked about, like copper tripeptide one, acetyl hexapeptide eight, niacinamide, which I kind of briefly talked about because this is a great ingredient for the under eye. I just think it shouldn't be 
the only ingredient in your eye cream if you're looking for a really good one but when you see it in addition to the other things we've talked about you probably have a goodie on your hand and this also has some barrier supportive ingredients in it too especially if you do suffer with a little bit of dryness which can make fine lines look worse it can make the under eye area look a little bit more crepey than it really is so it's good to keep that under eye area you know strong with the barrier but also hydrated as well and so that's why i wanted to shout this one out because like it's affordable it's got great active ingredients in it it's a nice enough like inoffensive texture because it's a cream texture it's pretty traditional it's just not really great it's just not really really rich it's like medium weight it's protective on the skin it absorbs and does all the moisturization inside not on the top layer of the skin so I think it's got a great easy to use texture a great ingredients list a great price and a great find in K Beauty. So what if you want to target your under eye concerns, but you're not fully on board with an eye cream product? Maybe you don't like the texture of them. Maybe you don't want to spend the extra money or you just don't really want to put the extra step into your routine every single day. I actually have some alternatives for you because you don't need to use an eye cream to get those benefits. So my first alternative for you is eye patches or eye gels. Now remember when I was talking about really hydrating the under eye area to smooth it out and to really smooth out fine lines and wrinkles? This can be extremely beneficial if you want your makeup to go on a little bit smoother or if you find that your makeup does settle into the fine lines and wrinkles. If you really, really plump that skin out before makeup application, you're gonna have better luck with your makeup not sinking into those fine lines. So that's where like the dedicated eye patches come in because you don't have to use them every day. They just give you that plump effect like temporarily for the day. So you can use these for special occasions or just when you need the pick me up in the under eye area. I'll use them a lot when I didn't get sleep and it's like, oh my goodness, you can see it. It's like my under eye area looks really dehydrated and almost like kind of like hollow. That's when I'll reach for the under eye patches or for special events and makeup application. So I love the ones from Costarex from the Advanced Snail line. These really plump up the skin because they're just so juicy. And the snail mucin is actually really reparative for the under eye area. It's very hydrating. It's very soothing and cooling. And it can also help to reduce any puffiness that you might be experiencing. Now, another way that you can get the active ingredients that I talked about in today's video, the ones that are really good for targeting under eye concerns, you can actually get those in non-dedicated eye cream products. You can actually use serums around your eye to achieve this. And it's gonna cut down on any, any heaviness that you might feel. And this could actually be a really good solution for those of you who do get melia or like those like white bumps underneath your eyes when you use eye creams that are just too rich for your eye area. This is the alternative for you. Now I wanna, before I go further, I just wanna tell you again, Please do not use any retinol around the eye area that is not a dedicated eye product. A lot of the other ingredients we talked about like copper tripeptide one and even acetyl hexapeptide eight can be applied in a serum around the eyes. And this could actually be a great way to save you some money and maybe even some time because you could just apply it to your whole face <laughs> and still get really good benefits. So I've actually been experimenting with this quite a bit um, over the spring and the early summer. And I was still seeing just as good as benefits as like the eye products that I talked about earlier. So here's some products I recommend. The Ordinary Buffet Plus Copper Peptides. This is actually a great serum for your whole face, but this actually does help to target the under eye area with 1% of copper tripeptide, which is actually a huge amount. It doesn't sound like a lot. It's actually a huge amount, and it's a lot more than you're getting in just the eye cream products alone. It really is. So this is gonna be like a really, really good way to get a lot of copper peptide right under the eye area to help stimulate collagen. Another product that I have found to be really awesome for the under eye area is also from The Ordinary and it's their Argrelene solution. It's actually 10% of acetyl hexapeptide 8. Remember, that's the one that gives you that immediate firm and lifted look. So if you're looking for instant like benefits, but you don't want to go down an eye cream route and you want a little bit more than just that temporary effect that a hydrogel or an eye patch is going to give you, 
try this. It's under $10 and it does give you immediate effects. It's super watery, quickly absorbed, but you're getting a lot of acetylhexapeptide 8 to get your little temporary Botox effect. Now, one more tip I have for you that's an alternative to eye cream and I personally find to be very affordable is slugging underneath the eyes. Super simple, right? I mean, everybody is talking about slugging because it's so good at uh, sealing in hydration and moisture and it can actually lend a, a glow to your skin the next morning. Petrolatum based products like Vaseline and Aquaphor and CeraVe, these are super duper inexpensive, especially for the quantity that you get. And don't be afraid to just put a little, little layer just underneath your eyes. You don't have to do your full face. But when you slug underneath your eye with a very occlusive product like Petrolatum, them. This actually helps to really seal in the moisture and the hydration of any other skincare products you put underneath it, helping them to be a little bit more effective for your skin. So if you do have a lot of like very dry skin underneath your eyes, or you feel like a lot of your fine lines and wrinkles are prominent because you're not holding hydration into your skin or you're not holding moisture and you really want that plumped out effect, just try a little bit of petrolatum. Like I said, very inexpensive. <laughs> the product will last you forever if you just use it underneath your eyes, right? But it can really help to give that little bit more smooth, a little bit more hydrated and moisturized look that can go a long way to the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles under the eyes. So that's really my hot take on the question of if you really need an eye cream or not. If you have under eye concerns that you want to target, I really hope that this video helped you find a good eye cream that is going to help you with those goals. And if this video did add value for you, if it helped you out, I would love it if you would hit subscribe to my channel before you take off. I do release a lot of content just like this one throughout the week, long form videos, and I do shorts too. So consider turning on notifications so you can always get your skincare fix. I am curious, do you have strong feelings about eye creams? Let us all know in the comments below. And of course, um, add in any tips um, to mine. If you have some other tips, let us know in the comments as well. As always, all the products I talked about today are in the description box for easy browsing. All right. I really hope that you guys are healthy, happy, and safe. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.